Hello, beautiful souls. I'm seeing mountains being shattered, but I'm also seeing mountains being built. And these are two different mountains. It's like if your mountain was extreme yang, I feel like I'm talking to a divine feminine who had to stand in yang energy because there was nobody to support. There was nobody to back you up. There was nobody to lean on. There was nobody that you could fall back on. Like there was nobody. That's what I'm hearing. There's nobody. This actually creates an imbalance within the internal self of the inability to receive, not because you didn't want to receive. I'm hearing you didn't have a choice. You had to be in this masculine energy to ensure the survival of other people around you. And also I'm hearing to cultivate strength within your own spirit, understanding the strength of you, the resilience of you. There's that piece as well. But I'm being told we're coming into a time frame where these two mountains, some people have an extreme yang mountain that's huge and the yin in their energy is leveled. And again, I'm being referenced by Anki right now in this moment. This is not about men and women. This is not about that. This is about your internal energy. So for example, if um, prime example, as a single parent, there are times that I have to be always in masculine yang action energy to ensure that my children get what they need when they need it. I do not have the luxury or the time to uh, muddle around in other things. I have to be this so I can create a container for their safety and their growth and their own journeys. Sometimes um, this is specific women, women who have had to go it alone for a long time because, um, because of your circumstances, because of fall throughs in relationships, because of imbalances in power dynamics in previous relationships. Some of you go back to, um, childhood, having those dynamics, having to look after, um, different parents or different people as a child often results in you continually and consistently taking that action role of giving, 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 or helping, 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 but the receiving mountain. So this distorted masculine energy that you've had to cultivate to survive, it served, it served its purpose is what I'm hearing, but now we're moving into a state or an evolution where that can be released. I'm seeing the mountain just crumble easily, effortlessly, just, uh, that distorted masculine energy is often created in feminines. This is a message for a divine feminine because you had no choice because you would not have survived if you did not take on that role or that energy. However, we are moving into a different time frame where you have the ability to receive but you, I'm hearing, sometimes it's really hard to receive after receiving so many times things that were not in alignment, things that created more effort for you, things that were completely distorted. But I'm being shown as this masculine energy where you had to do, do, do and didn't have a safe container, you didn't have a support. It's like the yin energy mountain begins to be built. And I'm actually seeing the mountain from Moana, the movie Moana, Disney Moana. I can't remember the details of it. They've stolen the heart from inside you. This does not define you. Uh, that's totally off key and totally the wrong words. But I'm being shown when you take the heart out of somebody, like think of the concept in the movie Moana, if you haven't seen it, essentially what happens is somebody steals the heart, the heart of the ocean or the heart of the mountain or the heart of the feminine Gaia steals the heart from inside her. For a lot of you, this is your heart being crushed over and over and over again. Disappointments, disappointments. People who were meant to lead uh, fall, fell flat on their asses and you ended up having to take that role. That's a specific message for somebody on here. So it's almost like when you take the heart from somebody and I'm being told you can relate this to grief, losing someone we love can be like having your heart taken out. Like completely removed from you. That's an aspect as well. When we take the heart from somebody and specifically, I'm being told reference specifically Moana, when they stole the heart of her from her, she became this molten lava mountain of darkness and black and throwing fireballs and anger and rage. And this went on for so long uh, that she forgot who she was. And what did it take? It took this courageous young woman, I guess you could say, to 
find the heart despite everybody thinking she couldn't or didn't and somebody right there standing beside her um, moving uh, in the opposition the whole time. But she found the heart and what happened when she put the heart back into the mountain? The mountain came up with this fierceness of anger and rage. But then when she just placed it, I'm also being referenced, notice in that movie, there was a splitting of the ocean. I'm being referenced that that's a splitting of Jesus or something to do with the Bible of parting the Red Sea. That's what it is, parting the Red Sea. You will notice that this young girl with extreme courage and absolute ridiculous faith and led by spirit, side note, is the ocean split for her. It was not her splitting the ocean. The ocean split for her. So that the heart of Nefertiti, oh, that's an Egyptian reference, but I'm being told to leave it in there because Nefertiti is very important energy right now for a lot of the divine feminine collective. But I'm being told to reference both the Egyptian Nefertiti, Nefertiti, uh, Nefertiti, it feels like. Yeah, I'm be, it's, yes, let me tell you, says one of my guides, Nefertiti. Uh, I'm being told to leave that reference in here because that is significant to this story that Spirit is trying to share in a logical context with the visuals from a movie that actually outlines it. When we return the heart to Tafiti, that's what it is in the movie. They're saying Tafiti is the Moana movie. So when they, when she, the sea parted for her, she did not part the sea. She placed the heart back into the heart of Tafiti back in her. And what happened to that molten rage, anger, darkness? What happened when the heart was restored? The mountain grew. It was no longer dark and black. All of the trees started to grow and all of the plants started to grow and all the flowers started to grow. All these beautiful things. It was like coming back to peace, coming back to home. And it's because her heart was restored. I'm also being pointed out to the collective consciousness when we are going through a massive purge like this and a massive illumination of deep wounding well, it doesn't matter what it's from, whether it's spiritual wounding, emotional wounding, physical wounding, psychological wounding. These are all interweaved and interconnected. They're all connected. Notice in the movie that all of the ocean water started to have this darkness come in and it was killing off the different islands. It was killing their vegetation. It was killing their food supply because of this darkness, because the heart of everything was removed. All that darkness permeated through the waters, went up through the root systems of the things that nourish us, right? The life force energy, I'm being told. These are all interconnected. So this is what's happening in the collective at this time. There will be points where the anger and the darkness will rage its rearing head. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Restore the heart. Restore the heart. I'm hearing no matter what, angry, because it's interesting that I'm getting it right now as this as it's coming through. This is a specific message for somebody on here, a divine feminine, who your heart has been stolen, crushed, betrayed, dismissed, denied, slandered, misused, targeted. You, you name it. I was going to swear there because that's how intense this is. You name it. It's like the heart gets stolen from you. Some of you, it happened like that. And others of you, it's death by a thousand cuts, right? It's a thousand little pieces. If your heart is shattered, it's like one person took one piece and another and somebody else over there and somebody else over there. We're restoring the heart. When you restore the heart, things begin to thrive again. When we restore the heart, all things flourish. That's why the heart is the bridge between the lower earthly chakras of the experience and the upper spiritual chakras of peace, of enlightenment, of joy. And I wish to point out on here, there's this whole thing about enlightenment. I think it's kind of funny because I always feel like everyone's enlightened, even if they don't think they are. And the reason I say that is, think about the word enlightened. The light is within you. You are the light. In no matter how dark your vessel, I can, I'm can. i seeing somebody's vessel that is like black, dark, dark inside of it. But guess what? There is this little 
spark in there that is glowing and it's barely discernible. Most people look at the, whoa, I see all this darkness and I'm backing away, but I'm being shown there is this speck of light that's in there, but the heart has not been restored. The heart has been removed. It's created holes in the auric field. It is a process to restore those beings and being referenced of something else. It's almost like when we're in darkness, we think there is no light because we do not see the light, but it is the light within us that provides the light. It's the light within us that gets restored. My personal perspective, understanding is that we are, we are innocent. We are all innocent in some way, shape or form. There is innocence when we steal the heart of people, we steal the innocence of them or we stamp it out or we crush it down. Somebody, your heart has been bound. Um, I wish to say that has to do with black magic. And if you feel a real deep heaviness on the chest and it's not yours, so if you have heaviness on the chest and it's just emotion coming up and out of you right now, allow that, uh, allow your heart to be restored. Allow yourself to have hope and faith, understanding that no matter what darkness shows up, your heart will overcome because the heart transcends all things. It allows us to take decisive actions from an alignment of the heart space, which is in essence the same as heart brain coherence. And being reference of a mapping system of some sort, uh, take that as it resonates. Maybe that's something that you're personally doing, but I'm being told to show you something, to show you something. This I purchased a while ago. It is Gaia. You'll notice her hair is the leaves of the trees. You'll notice that her breasts, which give nourishment to every child and everyone is a child. There is none of you. You are all someone's child. You are all the divine's child as well, as well as a physical somebody's child, whether or not that childhood was wonderful or not. You are all divine children. I got the whole world in my hands, says it of the song that's playing. You'll notice that that song is referenced as masculine, but you'll notice it is a feminine birthing the earth, birthing new earth, birthing process. It's so interesting that this is coming up because um, sometimes when I do spiritual work with people, they will go through an experience of physically giving birth or rebirthing. And I'm sure I'm not the only uh, healer or guide that has done this with people. I know lots of people go through an experience with different shamans and things like that, where you're rebirthing something. I'm being told to tell you that no matter how many times you were rejected we're going through a rebirth process, and I want you to notice it is the earth that she is pregnant with, the new earth. We each come to the new earth context or concept or new era at a different point in time, and some of us in different ways, but it is a rebirth, to be clear. It is a rebirth of the self. It is um, just like when we're born, go to the beginning and the end, says Anki. Just as there is a beginning, there is an end. Just as I am born on this date at this time, so too shall I be dying at another date at a specific time. And in that process, there is a rebirth. As I die from my physical form, I move into my spiritual essence, my core essence form. If we're spiritual beings having a human experience and I'm the spirit and I'm like, okay, I'm going into the physical vessel and I'm going to have this human experience of a lifetime. I did not relinquish my spirit at all. I, what I relinquished was that oneness and I came into separation because the body is the separation. When I look at Ava, there is a recognition. My daughter, Ava, for those of you who are new to my channel, my daughter, Ava passed away in 2010 there's a recognition of, I have oneness with her spiritually, mentally, physically, and psychologically. She's deceased. She is not in a physical body. When she came into the physical body, that was her and I spiritually feeling separate. And when she left her body, she went back into spirit form, which means I have full connection with her. There is no longer a separation. 
This is why we are calling for spirituality to be grounded onto the earth plane as a reality for so many people. It's to balance out this yin and yang energy within each of us. It is to restore the heart. It is to restore our own divine intuitive compasses. It's to instore the balance of all things. It's to, um, I'm saying in store, I'm saying in store. That's so interesting. I want to say ensure. It's to ensure these things. But I'm also being told, and that is what is in store. Because you got to have faith, the faith, the faith. You got to have faith, the faith. So restore your hearts because we are going through a rebirth process. And I'm being told, Eva says, um, she says, there is no separation in spirit. Each of you that come into a body that align with that before you die is in is important. It's imperative that as many people cultivate their connection with God, source, creator, and universe, because you're a child of that, which means you hold that DNA resonance, the original DNA um, count. I'm seeing 144,000. It's important that we remember that as we walk around the earth plane, that we have that power within us. We are that connection that disconnection that's created for us by overshadow and inner shadow and these experiences that steal the hearts and the innocence of so many people, um, that creates a disconnection. We feel even more separate. It feels even more dark and depressing. It feels like we are alone when in truth, coming into the human experience, the human body, the separation is. The body being in the body is the illusion of the separation. And yet, Ava says, we are one. You can feel my love. You can sense me. You know what I am talking to you. You know when it's another energy talking to you. There is a beauty and an essence in the energy that cannot be duplicated. And it most certainly cannot be replicated by anyone or anything. Uh, she says, neither can my energy be dimmed. For I am infinite. I am the light that cannot be snuffed out. I am the voice at the Eshaul. I am the voice that wipes the tears from your sorrowed hearts. We are restoring the hearts. We are restoring the balance. We are restoring all things. And it is through a rebirth. Again, I'm hearing, I got the whole world in my hands. That's what I'm hearing through that. So it's so beautiful. There's a lot of metaphors in this for a lot of people I'm recognizing right now. I don't need to place it for you. You will have resonance where it makes sense to you. Sometimes in channels, I did another channel highlighting this and I'm, going, I'm being told to share that it's important, but always have discernment in messages. When I'm out here as a guide, my job is not to tell you what to do or what not to do. Oftentimes we have moments where our we're just getting validation for a place that we're being guided to already by our own inner self. And Aaron is sharing through this because your higher self is showing up to say, yep, can you share that so that they extra know, yes, that's the way we're going. It's about cultivating that trust and intuition. And this is also how we're in service to each other. If you think about it from the context of a medium saved my life with my daughter in spirit. It's through that person listening to spirit, listening to her guides and listening to my daughter when I was not connected to spirit and I did not hear it and I could not fathom anything but darkness. Somebody else was in service simply by sharing one thing, by being who they are and sharing her messages. Saved my life. Saved my life, friends. I'm being told to share a bit of this story. Um, I'll link the link to uh, the first book that I wrote because it shares this story in there. But a long time ago, many years ago, I was absolutely in the darkest of the dark and I was suicidal. My health was very poor. Nobody could figure out what was wrong with me. My child had died. I lost my finances. I lost the ability to function physically mentally and emotionally, and I became suicidal. And this all just built up after the death of my daughter. It got to the point where I went out into the forest one morning, and this was like springtime. So I live in Canada, and in the spring, there's like this crispness to the air. 
there is, I don't know how to describe it. When you breathe in, it's sharp. And it's not like the cold sharp. And when you walk on the ground, it crunches. That's a distinct memory for me is the ground crunching. And because it was so early in the morning and there was nobody else there, there was this silence in the woods. It was just me. And every time I took a step, it was like breaking glass was crunch, crunch, crunch. There's nobody else there. It's like five o'clock in the morning. So I go into this forest and I'm at the point where I'm about to give up. I feel like I am of no value to anyone. I feel like I have everything set up so that somebody else can take care of my children because I'm not a good parent and I can't function and there's no point in me being here. I am actually a burden to everyone else because I am so unwell. That was the feeling and the experience of this in that suicidal state. I went into the forest, crunch, 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 and I stopped in the middle of it and I whispered, I whispered, I didn't even say it out loud so that anybody else could hear me. And I said, God, I just can't do this. I have to go. Like I have to, wow, I'm getting emotional talking about this. It's been so long since I've talked about this. It's so funny. But that was the emotion of that experience in that moment. It was like my literal words were, I give up. I cannot overcome this. I cannot beat this. It's just one thing after the other, after the other, after the other. And in acknowledging the acceptance of where I was at, I just felt this whole relief. And my plan started to come into place of how I was going to commit suicide. And I walked out of that forest actually feeling relief that I did not have to be here and I did not have to do this because I could not handle the amount of darkness coming at me from all places for so long. And what happened was, like, I want to say, I can't remember if it was a day later or a few days later. Anyways, a woman that I know reached out to me. I did not know she was a medium. Nobody actually knew she was a medium, side note. And she also had no idea what was going on with me. In fact, no one in my life knew what was going on with me. Knowing that I was suicidal after the fact was a shock to most people who were in my absolute most inner circle. That's how well suicidal people or suicidal ideations can be hidden despite subtle signs. Nobody saw this coming. It was a shock to all of them. This woman had no idea, no idea that what was going on with me. She assumed that everything was okay. And her exact words to me were, your daughter Ava has been coming to me for weeks. They are saying that you gave up. You are not supposed to give up. You have to learn how to do this. That is divine intervention in its finest. And I want you really highlight the fact here. The divine intervention came through another living person. Without that woman going out on a limb, and she was scared, um, Ava says, she was scared to share this message because this was not a facet of her that she had owned at this time. Just like you, she was walking in a place that was unknown and it was scary. However, she was brave. She had courage. She shared the message and she saved my life. That saved my life. So divine intervention most of us get caught on this area of divine intervention is the divine and the angels showing up, not recognizing that you as human beings are the divine walking this earth plane. You too are the cause of divine intervention. And I'm being told to go back. Ava says, go back. Do you understand why we are restoring the hearts of so many souls on the earth plane? Do you understand the process that's happening at this time during the great awakening, during the great revealing, during the great healing? Because think about it. We awaken. It's revealed, the great revealing. And then what happens? We have all the emotions that come when we suddenly see the truth. All the um, band-aids get ripped off, I want to say when we suddenly see that truth. And then we have a great healing. We're restoring the heart. It's important for somebody on here to know you need this message to understand. We are restoring hearts. Somebody, I, it's almost like somebody didn't understand this piece or did not see this coming is what I'm hearing. Somebody did not see this coming. There are those who are here for the piece of 
to awaken. There are those who are here for the piece of activating others. There are those who are playing a role of revealing things to others. There are those playing a role of guiding others through the process. There are those who are here to help restore hearts for the great healing, because that's what all of these are. No matter what happens right now, I'm being reminded, Ava says, when that big dark energy shows up or that anger and that rage because their heart has been stolen, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Come from your heart. We are restoring hearts. We don't restore hearts to somebody whose heart's already been restored. Those who are restoring hearts are often sitting on the bench and I'm being reference of a quote, and I can't remember what the quote is from, but I'm clearly seeing the image of it. And I did a Facebook post about this a few years ago, and it always resonated with me. And you see elephants sitting on the bench, and beside it is this teeny tiny little animal. Elephants are huge. And I can't remember exactly the words, but I'm going to try and remember it. It's, I do not care if you have stood with the great. I care if you have sat with the broken. And that quote is really coming in strongly right now for somebody on here. And I'm being told to tell whoever that is for your service. We, uh, there is great gratitude among the ethers for the broken that you sit with, for the, uh, the Asia, I'm going to cry right now, for the hearts that you help to restore, for the healing that you give to the spirit of another. Because remember, these are emotions and they are often not tangibly seen by others. So everybody's playing a different role. I'm also being told to highlight on here that rebuilders, those who are holding the frequency of what is going to be rebuilt in this new era or the new foundations that are being built, holding space for that and teaching that as well. All of these roles are significant and they all come together. One is not wrong. It's the aura. Ah. We have to stop looking at other people trying to make them like us. And we have to recognize everybody has a sacred role. Everybody's at a different point. And the people that they serve are different. And I'm not sure why this is coming in so strongly, but I trust that it is. And oh, oh, it's related to another channel. Let me tell you. Okay. It's related to another channel that's coming out. So. We are restoring hearts right now. And somebody needs to know that your heart is being restored through this process. You may link it back to the DNA purges. You can link it to the age of Aquarius. You can link it to all kinds of things. Understanding that divine intervention happens through us divine beings because we are all children of the divine. There is no one that is not, no matter how dark, technically the one infinite creator that is a creation of that as well. We are spanning universes here. It is not just about one thing or one area of consciousness is what I am hearing. There are multiple things happening at the same time. And I'm also being referenced to the watchers. That's specifically for somebody on here. I will leave that with you, beautiful souls. This is not at all what I sat down to talk about. So in good old spirit fashion, it's not about what Erin thinks she's talking about all the time. Sometimes it is when I'm teaching, but I recognize that sometimes there is messages that need to be delivered. And as a channel, my job is not to judge the message, whether it's right or wrong. My job is to allow it to flow through me. I'm being referenced again. We do not change the message. The message is intended to change us uh, for a higher frequency, for restoring of the hearts, for rebalancing of, I'm being referenced back to the divine feminine who uh, feel who has been in a distorted masculine energy. This is not your fault. I'm hearing there are times when you have no choice but to stand in that because that is the only way to survive in order to get into the thriving. We're at this. Whoever this message is for, you are now coming into the state of thriving, and this is beautiful because I feel like you have. <laughs> There's like, I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing one, one, one as a reference for whoever this message is for, as well as four, four, four. There is a ceiling high and I have 18 foot ceilings, 20 foot ceilings, friends. I'm seeing an entire wall of gifts on the yin side of that feminine receiving side, waiting for you to receive them all. And this is like a wall of gifts. You can't, I can't even see past it. They're showing me, it's like a wall of gifts on your left feminine receiving side. And all you have to do is choose to receive it. 
That's it. And I'm seeing that masculine energy of having to give, 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 do, 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 because you didn't just do it for you. You did it because you had to support others is what I'm hearing. And I feel like this is also for a single parent as well. And I feel like it's somebody who just, yes, let me tell you, this message is for somebody who recently commented regarding being a single parent and struggling through things. And I'm being told help is on the way. Divine intervention and divine help happens through us because we are divine beings, giving to each other, sharing with each other, having compassion with each other, holding a hand or giving a leg up to each other. It's not just about the divine helping us. The divine works through us. Therefore, we are here helping, which is part of the reason why I have this YouTube channel is to share things for people who can't afford to have a session. Maybe it's just a sentence that you needed on your journey and you never watch again. It doesn't matter to me. I'm called to share messages openly, vulnerably, and publicly for those who need it. So that you understand that you are not alone. So that you understand that there are divine beings who are here to help you. And I feel emotion. Whoever this is, I can feel all of your emotion. And all I can hear is a song. You are not alone. I am here with you. Um, not only do you have support from the divine, which is disembodied spirit guides, angels, ancestors, mother, father, God, the one infinite creator. So too do you have living beings who will be sent your way, who will share something with you that you need in the moment that you need it the most to help you, to get you back on your feet, to keep you going when you need it. That is the power of each and every one of you. And I'm being told to give a shout out to somebody who's watching this channel. You do this all the time for other people. You give a lending hand, you give a smile, you give a hug, oh, and you have the most exquisite energy. You are absolute joy. You have cleared and cleansed and purged and all of these beautiful things. And your spirit is so beautiful and so loving. And every word that rolls off your tongue drips with the infinite unconditional love. And every time you make a comment on somebody's YouTube channel, every time you smile at someone down the street, know that you are doing God's work. Know that you are doing the divine's work. Know that you just potentially saved somebody's life in that moment that needed to see a smile, that needed help in that moment. Whoever this message is for, do not stop doing what you're doing. The divine is working through you and you are an earth angel, 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 earth angel. You're also a mystic healer because it's almost like I'm seeing this person, your smile. I feel like you were um, embarrassed. I'm getting embarrassed by your smile at times, but I'm supposed to tell you your smile beams rainbows. <laughs> It's like I'm seeing you smile and it's like all these rainbows are rainbow energy frequency. This is a message for a rainbow sheep, star seed, light worker, whatever you attune to. I don't want, I don't want to um, make it a limited focus because it, this is encompassing for a lot of people. But it's like you smile and rainbow shoot. <laughs> rainbows are shooting out of your mouth and they go directly to the person that you just smiled at. And it literally hits their frequency, their auric field, their energy bodies, and they receive that rainbow frequency. It does not take away from you. It comes from within you and it is directly channeled and seeing the divine streaming it through you. It does not take away from you and beams out of you into others. If anything, it expands, amplifies and strengthens your divine connection and brings in more of that beautiful energy. Regardless of whether people respond to you, know that they are all dealing with their own lives and continue to share that. Do not forget to give it to yourself. And the divine is saying, even if you did, we are giving it to you tenfold, whether you recognize it or not, for everything that you give out. So I feel like we just hit a lot of different people. <laughs> and I trust that we are restoring hearts, both of those um, who are really, really tired of having to continually wade through and do a lot of working your light, I'm hearing, and I'm being referenced Rebecca Campbell, and I'm being referenced a deck of cards, oracle cards by her. So I feel like this is a confirmation so for somebody who has that deck of cards. I do not, although I'm very familiar with it. Somebody who has that deck of cards, this is a confirmation for you. What you have given will be returned to you tenfold. You will indeed reap what you have sown for yourself and thus will share it with others. And that is the beauty of karma for karma is good and bad. There is a lot of good karma for whoever this is with a wall, 18 foot wall stacked 
with they're all presents, they're all gifts. Um, and all you have to do is choose to receive them. That's it. That's it. And in order to choose to receive them, go back to the divine feminine who had to, in order to survive in harsh conditions, harsh relationships, and a lot of uh, negligence is the word I'm hearing, a lot of negligence that is crumbling. And this beautiful mountain of Tefiti, the mountain of creation, just starts to bloom and thrive again. And that's in your energy. Instead of finding this big mountain of yang, it's like you come back into the balance of your the yang. Obviously, you still need yang, but we're balancing it out where the yin gets to rise in that beautiful, restored heart because it's through the yin that we receive. I'm getting negative polarities of uh, masculine, feminine, gender principles, hermetic philosophy is what I'm getting with that. It is the same reference. It's the same thing. You could take every culture, you could take every belief system, and you are going to find this in there. And it always is about within the self. Always. They're always pointing you back to the self. So I'm excited for whoever is receiving a wall of gifts. Please receive it. You deserve it. Times I'm seeing a hundred thousand fold, a million fold. Grace, grace. You deserve it. You simply need to know that you deserve it. So I will leave that with you, beautiful souls. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if one of these messages were for you. And I am, as always, wishing you peace, light, love, healing, and transcendence. If you wish to join us, we are starting a new 21-day challenge. This is a 21-day self-love challenge. I was directed by Spirit to do this. We are spending from February 1st until February the 28th in a guided live connection throughout February for self-love, filling the self with an abundance of love and light force energy and all these beautiful things. I am very excited to do this. I love doing these 21-day challenges because they change frequencies. They change energies. They help us to keep the momentum of the higher timeline and the consistency needed in order to maintain the frequency or maintain that higher timeline. So if you wish to find out more about that and join us for the month of February self-love, you can find a link for that in the video description box below. Until next time, beautiful souls.